Hello, Internet. Not be surprised. It's me, Walter Rufik, the guy with the motorcycle. <laughs> People say that. Are you the guy with the motorcycle? I'm like, I mean, you're not wrong, but like, you're, that could be literally anybody. Anyway, I was going to take the Zero because I take the Zero a lot, but I'm riding with my brother, and I was like, you know, <laughs> I. I <laughs> This bike is so cool, I don't get a chance to ride it. And here I am parked where I usually depart for my big long trips and I want to go on a motorcycle trip super bad. But I haven't been able to because, I mean, it's been sitting for like six months because of winter. Now the good weather is here and now I don't have money or time savers to travel. So I still have it, but I can't travel. It's pretty annoying. Anyway, I'm probably going to sell it. I haven't decided. I don't want to. Like any bike I've ever had, never want to sell it. It's just a thing of, should I? I mean, if I could sell it for what I wanted for it, yeah, I should sell it because that gives me the option to, well, I'll still have two bikes. And what I'd like to do is probably just go back to converting the Super Duke to touring. Or if I want to, I could then take the money and then buy a smaller adventure bike like the Tenere 700. I really am interested in that. But anyway, um, it is listed for sale on Cycle Traders. If you go on Cycle Trader and you find one that looks just like this, most likely it's mine. If you actually happen to be interested, you can find it there and you'll get my email and all my personal information if you really want it but i got the camera on this time whoa it doesn't work very well i was going to step on the kickstand which works on the center stand but not so much on the side stand and since i've perfectly caught my boot on that since i've bent my zero stand i don't want to risk bending this kickstand we're going to go out this way oh big plush boy big plush boy so this is cool uh it had water retention in here but it seems to have finally dried up and gone away now i have no more phantom finger and the gps works perfectly fine so i guess i got to talk about i'll just talk about the bike um the bike is perfect except for two things this kickstand or kickstand the passenger stand the kickstand side is completely like defunct i should have i can still go my brother can keep up the other thing is right uh, yeah right there i can't tell because i'm looking backwards but this lock right here the locking mechanism came out and so now that one doesn't lock you can't actually lock that pannier actually you could just open it no one would know by looking at it that it doesn't lock but it doesn't lock those two things are wrong with the bike and that's it everything else is perfect i bought it man hasn't been a year yet it's close but about a year ago i bought it with a little over 3,000 miles and i took it on five trips in the summer and I put on freaking 12,000 miles. Traveled a lot. Five long trips, long ass moto vlogs, I call them. Not the only trips I've done on a bike, but the only ones that did on this one, obviously. Oh, he changed his mind. Okay, at least he signaled, kind of. It was mostly all highway, obviously, because I traveled, where did I go? I went to Colorado, went to, well, I came from Texas, went to Colorado, went to Florida, went to Maryland. I did some dirt stuff. I did like half a BDR in Maryland, so that was some dirt stuff. Oh yeah, then I went to Oklahoma, and I did some dirt stuff there. I managed to, in all the time I've owned it, to not drop it, so that's pretty cool. I'm not a Beamer guy, because I, I like I always use my turn signal which means I probably shouldn't have this bike just for that reason but like I said this bike is awesome I don't want to sell it it's just I probably should so if the opportunity comes up sure the issue is it's always been the issue since winter I just don't really have opportunities to you know take it on trips which is just horrendously annoying but it's like either sit on the bike that you don't have the time and money to travel with and then the bike rots or you sell it and then you have an opportunity to travel on like something less awesome because there's nothing more awesome than this bike for traveling. So I'd probably just kit up the Super Duke again, which is stupid, but I probably would. Or get like something cheaper or smaller like the T7, although it's not like cheap, it's just cheaper than this bike. Anyway, geez, this bike is huge compared to yours. Your bike is tiny. XS11 Special. Man, this bike is never gonna be beat with these highway pegs I stuck on. And the backrest, dude, you can like recline almost. It's so awesome. I tried like on the KLR when I had that for a bit. I put like a big set of bags behind me and I just, you know, try to get cushioned. And that worked okay, but not as well as this. And the biggest problem, all that volume on top of the bike just made it catch wind like a mamma jamma. It was already bad in the wind, like at high speed. And I almost got knocked off of the interstate on the highway, <laughs> on the interstate on the highway. It was so windy, it almost blew me off the bike, or blew the bike off the road. Whatever, the moral story is, any bike I get that's a sport bike of some kind is not gonna be this comfortable. Well, I forgot how this thing shifts. I've never, Get, well, I, I get used to it, but I forgot. Clutch engagement is like halfway. I'm not used to it. I'm used to engaging right away. I haven't gotten used to it yet. Sorry. One thing I love about this bike is being able to stand on it properly. The freaking 
Well, I mean, I did have to raise the handlebars, but the bike is designed to be stood on, and it has these huge pegs now, so you can stand on it so comfortably. Ah, I stand on the Zero, you know, I try, but it's not designed for that, and so the, the nothing's where it's supposed to be, and so it's kind of uncomfortable. You're kind of like bending the knees or arching your back or your shoulders trying to make it fit. But on this bike, you can just be like, ah, and it feels so comfortable. Did I grow? I couldn't have grown vertically. I was like, this is closer to the ground than I remember. So either I'm huger, the tires are flat, or I'm dumb and I can't rememberize the bike. It's probably the third one. Over for the backfires. That's my boy! My boy! That guy I used to work with him. What am I doing sitting up? Come on, I have a freaking... Oh, yeah. That's how it's done. So I know I came out here on the Zero once in a finally Friday, but I've been out a few times since, way out specifically out there, and they keep changing stuff, but they already built a road. That's crazy. They already built a road. I'm so glad I got it before that, but they were just terraforming the Mama Gem out of all that. It used to be like all brown, now it's like all green. That's crazy how fast things change. I went on all these areas and explored them a few times, and you know, I recorded when I did it, just in case something happened, I can put them on the money. But no, nothing happened. I was an electric bike, being really quiet and sneaky, out in the middle of nowhere, basically. So no one heard me, nothing happened. There was nothing to share. But it's still kind of a shame that I had so much fun personally and spent hours out there. But then you're not going to see any. But that's just the nature of the gig. I ride for freaking hours a week, and you see maybe five minutes of it. Well, this sucks because this is this this is the specific road I wanted to like kind of weave on but we might be stuck behind this mcgeezer and as the person leading the ride i feel responsible for any inconvenience that's outside of my control like when I, we get to the end if we're behind this guy the whole time i have to go to my brother hey i'm so sorry that the road usually it's actually really fun but uh, there's a guy in front of us oh he must have been listening to me all right all righty i'm not gonna fly i'm just gonna go not slow i assume my brother knows this road i don't know that he knows it i don't care if he knows it i wanted to be on this road so here we is we're heading to a road that i suspect most everyone who rides around my area knows it's called prairie star parkway and i think it's really neat because i mean i discovered it myself but i'm not the one to have discovered it you know other guys who ride have gone and found it but prairie star parkway is a lot like this but the elevation doesn't change it's just flat but then it goes kind of like this and then there's seven roundabouts which sounds like it sucks but a few things about the roundabouts the roundabouts are two lanes wide so even if there is somebody in the roundabout you can usually just go around and keep going the other thing not important but i really like it is the fact that it has seven roundabouts which i think i said and therefore because it has seven rings i personally call prairie star parkway the arc because halo the arc has seven rings i mean the cannons are technically way more difficult than that but whatever seven halo rings so i just call it the arc because it does this so it's like that cute name it's weird being on this bike and being out here in this weird ass place it's like oh i must be in the middle of a trip right now i must be somewhere i don't know no i've been here several times i'm not traveling i'm gonna be home in a few minutes <laughs> It's weird like if you tie an experience to one vehicle you only ever like expect to experience it so i'm expecting to be traveling right now Alrighty, this is ring number one to the left dead ends the road literally dead ends so this is the start from this end that's ring one i remember when i first did this road with other people it was years ago actually i think it was in a moto monday okay i can't cheat i gotta keep i gotta keep my lane also i'm taking the whole lane now because i've been using just the left half of the lane but i don't need to do that he just needs to give me space. Oh, that was ring two. I gotta keep track. I've counted them several times to make sure there are seven. There are seven. Uh oh. Okay, we're good. Woo! This bike putting it down. Putting it down. Putting it down. Put police lights on this bike and it's gonna be a hot pursuit vehicle. Please don't do it, you ass wagon. Okay. I have to hit the brakes for you. You impeded my progress. That's no bueno, taco. Ah! I already lost count. I think this is four. It might be five. Gosh darn it. The video will show, but I'm going to go ahead and say that's four. Whee! So there's cars out here, but they usually go the same way you're going. And then there's two lanes, so you usually always have a chance to keep going. You usually don't have to stop, which is one reason why this is great. See all the curves and stuff? All right, that's ring five. Six. Eee! I don't like hitting that paint. I hate it. I hate it. I get a little anxious when I touch it. Ah, uh, it sucks. I had to hit the brakes for this one. Kind of. I'm going to take this ring. Ah, uh, well, I'm not flying through it, but that is ring seven. So seven rings is probably in the Christmas song. I don't know, but there you go. I should have stopped right there, but I'm going to, I'd have to hit the brakes too quickly. 
I gotta stop somewhere and let him take over now because I told him I'd take him up here and then he gets to take us back. <laughs> so that water tower, it's weird to be on this side of the highway, but I've taken the back maintenance roads on the zero to that water tower a few times. I know that side of the highway, I know the back roads there. Oh, he's starting to go faster. I won't be left behind. I'd be embarrassing. But yeah, if you ride in Kansas and you happen to know that water tower, I know how to get there. I found it. <laughs> oh my gosh. I know this place. This is where I bought my car. How exciting. Right up there. About a third of a mile. That's where I bought my car last year. Very cool. Look at that. This bike is like a police cruiser. This bike can just do anything. You can lay it down. You can accelerate. You can haul all your crap. You can strap a prisoner or your girlfriend to the back. Either way, handcuffs are nice. So this dip, I know it's on a mode of Monday from years ago, but the first time I ever rode up this dip was down there and up. And we were going like allegedly three digits. It was so fun back then. Now I don't know if I'm old or desensitized, but if I were to go 100, I'd be like, whatever whatever oh my gosh look at that Woo! oh man look at that i want to go out there and do things in the dirt is this college up here no I would, whoa <laughs> too busy looking ahead i can still make it there's no cars behind me at all he wants to play around behind the warehouses okay i got you so this is the kind of thing you want like the zero or the super duke because this is like and i told him like i can i can follow on this bike just fine but like it won't be as fun as the other two okay i am gonna end the video here i forgot i don't actually have to take you home with me though you may or may not like it you're not going home i'm going home i'm gonna eat chocolate if i can help it and go to bed <laughs> thank you guys for watching though appreciate you i hope you're all doing well and being good and i will see you later bye